to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, Wi Fi's. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back and welcome in to yet another underground and yes, still under renovation transmission of the wireless woman. But go ahead and do me that big favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. And if you haven't already, I mean, what is the problem? Go ahead and make sure you subscribe to the channel. And click the bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content. Listen, it has been a strange but very exciting time for me. I have a lot going on with school and I'm over on TikTok. Y'all make sure you follow me from here over to TikTok. And I'm bringing a lot of my TikTok following back over here to YouTube. So we have a lot to get into when we get over here, okay? And Black women. With the current state of the economy, of the po politics in this country, we cannot afford to move like everyone else is moving. We are going to have to be the innovators that we were born to be. So at the intersection of integration and inflation, we have to take a look at how America got to be great. And America has always relied on someone, someone to be the slave class. And now that many Americans have become upwardly mobile, so much so that our labor force is currently running at 67%. There are 9.6 million. As of the last update to the job reports, there are 9.6 million unfilled vacant jobs, which... That number is inflated. A lot of these positions have been filled, and that's why so many people who have been <laughs> searching for jobs, some for months now, two and three months, are not finding that they're securing employment. So I have a friend, a friend of a friend that works in HR, and she was talking to me about how their whole entire sales department got laid off in one day, and no one, no one in HR was alerted to the fact that it was going to happen. She was like, we have been working to process all these terminations. And she said, normally it just doesn't happen like that because their department can't take on a whole department being terminated at one time. I mean, people working overtime just to process people's COBRA, all that different stuff that happens in HR when they let your ass go. And so she was saying that is unprecedented to come in and have a whole department be laid off like that. And nobody prepped them for that. They not even know. So I'm saying that to say that companies, you have to understand people are corporations. You have a social security number. Corporations have an EIN number, but all of them are taxable entities within the United States. And the same pressure that you're feeling to keep those bills paid, keep those lights on, keep your Starbucks coffee up full. So are corporations. And in order to cut the the profit margin and be able to take more money home, because let's be honest, none of us are scaling back. None of us are scaling back like we should be. So in order to make sure that those CEOs are continuing to have the same level of profits that they had pre and post pandemic, they're letting folks go. And when you sit and look to the tune of 11,000 people coming over the border daily, millions almost at this point, they have crossed the border and been put in sanctuary states and cities. I doubt that these two things are mutually exclusive. A lot of the new jobs, they created a, a little over 151,000 new jobs last quarter and None of them were specialized jobs in specialized sectors. A lot of people have been concerned about AI taking their jobs. But immigrants are going to be filling a lot of these positions that do not require a living wage. And here's the thing. At a certain point, 
mostly all Americans that aren't black were immigrants. So these people are taking the opportunity to come here to this country and better their prospects. And a lot of people don't respect the fact that immigrants have to work a lot harder than we do to accomplish the American dream. And a lot of them do. A lot of them live together in quarters. They build up their communities. They create villages. They raise their children. You know, they're characterized in the news like thugs and criminals. But what does that remind you of? Does that not remind you of what was said about Blacks who were in the ghetto? So we have to be careful as Black people to create allies wherever we can. Because the same way that white supremacy holds on to power by integrating new groups of people into white hegemony, Black people have to take their cues for how to build Black nationalism and Black power platforms the same exact way that white people have because we are within this country. And the the mechanisms of the system work no matter who uses them, no matter who uses them. Well, we have Indian people that come in here as immigrants. We have a lot of Ukrainians that have come here as a result of the war in Ukraine. And all of these people have to participate in the economy at the same way, whether we think whether we think or know that they have had certain benefits over others, there's still a race to run. I was a track and field person. So I know that there's a stagger, you know, and depending on what lane you're putting, you may even have to run a little bit further. If you out there in lane eight, baby, good, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Cause you're going to have an extra few yards to get over on people. And most people don't win in lane eight. Most people can't win in lane one, even though the distance is a little bit shorter. The stagger that you have to make up in order to be in the race, sometimes it can't be overcome. Usually the fastest qualifiers will be put in lanes four and five, three, four and five. And then based on the slower ones, they're given the disadvantage at the same time. So we see that in sports. And capitalism is one of those systems that incentivizes people to hoard wealth no matter who it is it happens on every level and so even in the middle class you come down the street everybody has a car on that street but a lot of people that are immigrating into this country they'll say that hey listen you buy a lawnmower and cut all the yards you buy a car and take everybody to work you buy you know a refrigerator or a deep freezer and we'll put all our meat at your house it's a communal system and when you say stuff like socialism and communism in this country nobody even wants to have the conversation about it doesn't work though but could it be the answer to the issues that we're having in this country. Because let's do a little history lesson here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because socialism, the social security system that was created in the 1920s, let's, let's do a little history lesson. So the American, the U.S. social security system was adopted from a system that had been used in Germany by Otto von Bismarck. There were many socialists that were involved in creating the social security system whereby all of us place a portion of our income into this system in order to provide for those who would otherwise be a drain on the American economy. That is the very definition of socialism. And other than the capitalists that are in our country, most people live under socialist principles. Go fund me socialism, um, pensions, 401ks. These are socialist systems that are created to pool resources that are at use at various times for certain portions of the population. And it is us that support capitalists not having to pay their employees a living wage. And the defense for that is always that, you know, well, if we gave these people money, they would go out and buy things. But consumerism is tied to capitalism. Consumerism is what gives capitalists their money because their money is nothing but large pools of our funds. 
of us paying for the very services and goods that should be guaranteed to us in our country because of the work that we do. If people just got the living wage, if they just got the work that they did, then we wouldn't have the problems that we have. Because here's the thing, there's no way that Jeff Bezos is out working you. There's no way that Elon Musk did more work than you did. And that's the reason why he's a billionaire. But I say these things to say that black women, to the backdrop of all of these things, to the backdrop of the economy failing, to the backdrop of the political systems being at each other's throat, and neither one of them <laughs> having our best interest in mind, we're going to have to move different. We're going to have to be the leaders that are moving in a different direction away from these systems that have proven over the course of many different people being inducted into white privilege has failed. Black women are the only ones, the last ones, the last group, the last holdout, the final, <laughs> the last dragon to be inducted into white privilege. We benefit the least from it. But you see it, you know, like I know, we have been put in these rooms. We have been asked to bestow our excellence to white institutions. Uh, Belize, tourism, uh, home ownership, a lot of black women are the only section of black society that is participating in capitalism. We're seeing black men be laid off in droves, not have marketable skills that can give them the competitive edge that we have under capitalism. And this is just yet another group that is being inducted into white privilege. I'm seeing a lot of black women come out against immigrants, come out, come out with some very conservative, traditional views as if any of that has ever served us. We're going to have to be radical in order to be revolutionary. We who have been outside of the system have to now dismantle, deconstruct all systems of oppression in order to find solutions that do the greatest good. But at this point, when we're seeing immigration be coupled with inflation, I need y'all to understand that we're going to have to build a network that's unlike anything that's been seen before, but it can be done. Before there was Facebook, someone imagined that there was a Facebook. Before there was Amazon, someone was able to imagine. Someone was able to stand inside their garage and imagine a world where Amazon made it more convenient for people to be able to get resources and supplies. And then it took an event. The pandemic changed everything for Amazon. And Amazon was doing great without the pandemic. But when we were stuck in our homes, maybe I had an Amazon package come to my house every day. And who else could do it? Like, even if I wanted to boycott Amazon, who else can do it? But it started with a spark. Every fire starts with a spark. And Black women, we are going to have to be the spark. We are going to have to be the inspiration. You're the meaning in my life. You're the inspiration. We're going to have to be that. Because this economy, this society is running out of motivation. And it needs some Kelly Rowlands. Go, go, go. Motivation. So listen, if you see what I see and you feel as I feel. But if you see. What I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. If you're willing to take that journey with me out into the wilderness, off the grid, be wireless. Like Glorilla said, be in the air, I'm everywhere. Then like the air, I'm everywhere. Then go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji for me in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. Make sure you're following me on all my socials, y'all. But until the next transmission, go ahead and clock out for me. Now this is your place, but I am in charge of the girls. You can just kiss my ass.